What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna to be talking about encoders, arcade encoders for your Nintendo Switch. And no, they are not in tech. Switch Arcade. So I'm getting a lot of DMs and emails questioning, talking more about, hey Vic, I need some more details as far as the encoders on your Konami cabinet. If you haven't seen videos on it, go back on my whole YouTube history or whatever, you'll see the dedicated Konami style Switch Cade. Basically this is a Switch, I can't really say the company name, but you could guess the company name. It is a dedicated Switch arcade cabinet. The reason why I can't say the company name is because my specific unit, my specific handheld, which I dub as the ultimate handheld, which now you do have like the Steam Deck, so it's not really... Anyway, I dubbed this ultimate handheld because it's modded. It is a modded device, so I do have the entire eShop library. I also have 9,000 retro art games on this and PSP emulation. So there's a lot going on. And if you do want to see more details as far as the actual cabinet and details go back on those videos now the one very unique thing about this is that yes it is a dedicated switch cade it is an arcade cabinet dedicated to the switch and the big reason i'm making this video is because a lot of people want more details as far as the encoders again the encoders are is the device it's a usb device that talks to the switch and translates to arcade buttons and arcade joysticks a lot of people do come from the arcade one-up community they are very familiar with the Intech board. If you don't know what it is, you could definitely take a look at it. Basically, you take this, you take the control panel of an RK one up and you put in the Intech board. It's actually cut out, it's specifically made for RK one ups. I believe it's a Bluetooth controller, so it connects via Bluetooth to your switch. And now you have a switch cade on your RK one up. Granted, you still have to do the LCD mod and all that, but the Intech board basically makes it plug and play. Now, I personally don't have an Intech board. I've never seen one, I never held one, I never reviewed one. I I'm basing all of my thoughts that I'm gonna say in this video strictly on what I've read and just personal opinion. That's, keep that in mind, okay? So I'll be talking about the Intech board and I will definitely be talking about one thing that I noticed versus the encoders I'll go into button mapping and all that because I do have I have a viewer that does want to know how I mapped out the buttons and all that. It'll be a big deal. But again, this cabinet right here is not running in tech hardware. This is actually running SJ at XJ encoders. All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry, while I was shooting the video, I had to you know attend to a customer. So um, new day, refresh mindset. Here we go. I actually caught myself. The name of the encoder is from a company called SJ at JX. I'll link it down below so you have the exact encoder that I have in my cabinet. Um, it's actually pretty funny. If you go back again to the original Konami video I made, I did talk about the guy that built an arcade cabinet. He was featured on Retro Ralph for Super Smash Bros. And he used this encoder that I'm saying now. And at his time of filming, it didn't work. But I guarantee you, it does work. Now, real quick, long story short on why his didn't work was basically certain games use the left analog stick and certain games use the D-pad. And his encoder at the time, it would only do, I believe it was the left analog stick or the left D-pad. It, it only did either or. Um, and what he experienced was that Super Smash Bros, for example, is a game that needed the left analog stick and does not utilize the D-pad besides like taunt or something like that. So. That was the headache that he was dealing with, but I guarantee you, and I'll show you when it comes time for the button mapping on this, this does work. That is what's great about this encoder, is that there is a button you have to press that will swap between X input and D input. Basically, again, the D pad on the left side or the left analog stick. So again, this does work. At the end of this video, again, if you are looking to modify a cabinet to have for a dedicated switch, a switch cade, I highly suggest these encoders, they do work and I will go through everything on how to get it to work. So real quick, I described to you like the journey I had doing this, it really wasn't a journey, it was, it was a gamble I took. I was looking at reviews, especially on Amazon. If you look at the reviews on this encoder, there are some people that say, yes, I got this D input to X input swap to work. And then there are some people that said, no, I couldn't get it to work. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna load up Smash and I'm just gonna show you 
why it's important for this encoder to do what I'm saying. Um, again, we're just gonna kind of pick something random uh, while we're doing it. And just to show off, again, why it was a big deal for this encoder basically to work. And again, two players does work. I should have done player two, but I just wanna show you this X input to D input and all that. It's not only Smash, there are some other games that require it. So as you can see right now, I'm Donkey Kong and I'm taunting. I'm not moving, I'm taunting. So this is really set to D input. But if I press the green button, I am now able to jump around. So I can go up, I can go right. And as you can see, that was the very important thing when it came to the encoders. Again, if I hit the, the green button, I am now in this taunt phase if I'm not getting attacked. And as you can see, I'm taunting. I can't even go left and right unless I hit the green button. Once I bring the green button in, I am able to navigate. So again, that is the big deal on why it's important to get the correct encoder. And like I said, when I was looking on Amazon, people were having like a yes or no, it was a 50-50 chance on it. And for the price, which right now it's $33, I was like 33 bucks, I'll, I'll take the gamble, I'll buy it also to Amazon. So worst case, if it doesn't work, you could always return it, no issues. And the great thing is that for 33 bucks, it is two encoders. So you do get player one and player two. So now basically what we determined or what I determined is that once I got this encoder in the mail, I plugged it into the switch and I had the same exact issue. I couldn't get the Smash Bros players to move left and right. I had to do a little bit of digging in and basically somebody in the comments in the review section wrote that you have to message SJ at JX. You literally just write it on Amazon. Amazon has like a messenger feature and you write to them, you say, hey, I need this, the upgrade program. It's literally an executable that they're gonna send you. It's a program that you run, you literally plug your USB in to the PC and it flashes it and boom, I was set, good to go. So out of the box, it will not run. You will need this upgrade hardware. And honestly, the company messaged me very quickly. You know, again, wherever they are, which I'm assuming is overseas, um, I messaged them in the afternoon and then they messaged me at night with the file. Unfortunately, I can't give you the link. The link was attached to like a OneDrive or like a Google Drive. I did try sending it to a customer and I was like, oh, and somebody's like, hey Vic, can you share the executable? I sent him the link or the message I should say, which was a PDF and in that PDF was a link to a website, to a Google Drive. I sent him the Google Drive link and it, it wouldn't work. So I don't know, again, you're better off messaging the company directly. They will send you a PDF with this URL in it. You launch the URL, you download the executable and then you run the program and that is it. So you do that for both encoders. You have to plug one encoder in, flash it, take it out, leave the USB plugged in, but take out the encoder, put player two in, flash it, and then you're good to go. So now real quick, we're gonna make a comment about this encoder, which the same company makes. Again, SJ at JX. I was originally gonna buy this because if you look very carefully, again, we do have the button layouts and all that. I basically have all the buttons that are on the handheld. The only thing I'm really, really, really missing is the right analog stick. That's the only thing that I'm missing out of this control panel. I don't really think many games utilize it. Um, and again, I did a live stream as far as Super Smash. There are some like advanced kind of, let's say heavy punches that are mapped to the right analog stick. But as I was playing it, I discovered that basically if I do a combo of, let's say joystick right and punch, it would do this heavy attack. So. Keep that in mind also, the right analog stick is not here on this specific one, but they do make an encoder, and I'll flash a picture of it now, they do make an encoder that has two thumbsticks. I'm guessing you could use it for the left analog and the right analog stick. The only thing is number one is the price, it's 30 bucks for only one player, and the other headache that I don't, I don't have experience on is I wouldn't even know how you mount those thumbsticks. I don't know if you could put a screw through them or mount it, you might have to glue it. I'm not too sure, I didn't want to take that risk. So granted, yes, I don't have right analog stick, but also the Intec board doesn't have right analog stick. So it's a fair comparison. What, I'm have, what I have here versus the Intec board, again, I will go over and I'll give you my personal opinion on the Intec board. 
So now keep in mind, these encoders are hardwired. There are two USBs coming out of the encoders. So I do have player two here, and I do have player one here. So two, and they do give you pretty long wires. I would say they're a good maybe six to seven feet of wire. And it's going into the dock of the device. And I always have my device in the cabinet. It is hard mounted. I took the dock, I put two screws in the base of it, and it's set, it's not going anywhere. I never really play with my handheld outside of the dock because I keep it on the cabinet. Only time I ever take it out is if I'm ever going on a trip, I'll take it out. But as you can see, I do have two encoders. So we have player one and we have player two. And again, it's just USB. The only big thing is that you do have to go into settings and I'll kind of do a overlay right now. You do have to go into settings and activate wired pro controllers or something like that. Uh, I'll show you real quick. And as you can see, once you have that active, it will recognize the USB device. So now like I even talk about with like Wi-Fi and all that, these are hardwired in, so you shouldn't experience any latency or lag. Again, the Intec board, from my understanding, it is a Bluetooth connected device. You are talking wireless now, so I don't know if there is any input lag. Again, I don't have one, I never felt one, I never tested one, but same kind of theory when it comes to Wi-Fi. Like for me, all my like devices, like my PC stuff, I never have it on Wi-Fi. They are hardwired connected. Now real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tell you my button layout specifically on my build and what I believe works perfectly fine and I'm gonna compare it to the Intec board. So now looking at the control panel here, obviously you have your left analog stick. Uh, basically on player one encoder, I have these eight buttons, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So I have 13 buttons mapped on the first encoder. On player two, I have the eight, nine, 10, and 11. These two buttons here, I'll, I'll go into detail on exactly what they are, but basically I have the snapshot button and I have the home button. So I'm gonna tell you the button layout according to the encoder, and then I'll tell you what they translate to as far as the switch side of it. But I'm gonna tell you right now my exact button layout according to the encoder inputs. I'll flash the encoder here as you see here, okay? Starting from the top row here, I have Y, X, L1, L2, B, A, R1, R2. Then at the top I have here start and select. I have here, which is the home button. This is mapped to mode. And then the snapshot button is mapped to PRTSC, so print screen. And the biggest thing is the D-pad to X input, this is set to So, now, so as far as what this translates to on the handheld, it's your basics. You do have here the Y, the X, this is just L, and then this is ZL. Bottom here, you have your B, your A, R, and then ZR. Up top here is your plus, your minus. Again, this analog D input, there's no actual input on the handheld. This is your home button, and this is your snapshot button. So now real quick, I'm gonna take the opportunity because we're talking about the button layouts, and I'm gonna tell you my layout versus the Intec board, and at least from what I'm understanding, what I've seen online. I'm gonna right now launch Ultra Street Fighter 2, very popular game amongst us arcade guys and all that. And again, I'm gonna read, say what my layout is, and I'm gonna put on the screen the Intec board layout. And even when it comes to main emulation and all that, when we do Street Fighter, we basically have a specific button layout, especially when it comes to Pandora's boxes or even the Raspberry Pi builds. Um, usually it is the Y, X, L, B, A, R. And again, I'm gonna flash the Intec board, I'll put on the corner here. And as you can see on the Intec board side, it, it doesn't jive that way, it won't work that way. You need to use the top four buttons uh, again, it, it doesn't it doesn't really make sense. So I'm right now going to launch two-player Ultra Street Fighter 2. And we're going to do it like normal, like it should. So the top buttons here should be punches. The bottom buttons here should be kicks. So if I press Y, 
X, L1, again, mine is L1 here, and this is L2. So these, again, as you can see, these are punches, so light, medium, heavy. Bottom row should be kick, so it's light, medium, heavy, and then also light again. Again, from what you see with the Intech board, the way exactly it is there, it's light, medium, that would be a kick on the top, and then L, which is hard punch. So you're going punch, punch, kick, punch. So you would have to use these four buttons up top. Then you got kick, kick, ZR is a punch, and then ZL, which is L2, is a, probably a, a, another punch. It's, as you can see, the way Intech is, it's, it doesn't jive correctly. It, it, as far as Street Fighter, it won't play it correctly. But the way I have it set on mine, it will play it easily and correctly. That's, that's the way Street Fighter should be played. Again, light, medium, heavy punch, light, medium, heavy kick. Whereas the Intech board, it's light, medium, heavy kick, and then light, medium, heavy punch. It's, it, it doesn't work that way, it, it's god awful. And as you can see, I could use a joystick, I could throw a Hadouken, same thing with player two, very easy to go. Again, if I wanna pause, that's my plus button, I have minus two, and then if I wanna go back home, I press the home button. I can go back into the game, and if I want to, I could take a screenshot, you can see capture taken, and I'm good. Now this game doesn't utilize a X input or a D input. As you can see, no matter what, I'm able to move my character. So this is one game. Again, I did want to compare my button layout to the Intech. And again, this is a very popular game. I just downloaded Samurai Shodown and Mortal Kombat 11. We might as well try that real quick for video purposes and we'll see how that works. So again, I personally have not played Mortal Kombat 11 on this device on the handheld. I played it on, um, you know, PC, but I've never played it on this. So we're gonna see exactly how my button layout works out. Again, I don't, I don't know what to expect. I literally just downloaded this game for the video along with Samurai Showdown. Cause in all honesty, a lot of people do modify this to play fighters, but the handheld, the Switch does have amazing beat them up to and all that it's a great system so right now i'm able to do i'm able to walk so it doesn't matter if it's x input or y so let's see we got a punch we got a punch we got a grab and we got a switch stance we got a kick we got a kick nothing on that and a block so again from what i'm understanding if it was l and r up top here so it'd be l and then this button here wouldn't do anything. Yeah. So, as you can see, as far as with Mortal Kombat, I don't even know how I did that. It's good. My button layout on this, again, Mortal Kombat, is technically a four button game with the grab is five and then a block is six. If you count the switch stance, it's seven. Let's exit out and we're gonna give Samurai Showdown a try. So we got another game loaded up. This is Samurai Showdown. We're gonna see right now if this game utilizes X input and D input. So no, it doesn't matter. Let's see, we got a punch, we got a punch, we got another punch, and a super kick, kind of a dash, block, and a grab. So this game is utilizing all eight buttons. And like I said, compared to the Intech way, it's just not, it's not correct, especially when it came to Street Fighter. You might be able to get away with it or get used to it, you know, on other games, but it's it's not like Street Fighter. Street Fighter on the Integ layout was god awful. It, it would have pissed me off. So again, from my experience, if you wanted to do these encoders versus the Integ, we'll do the comparison now. Again, when I was looking at encoders, I was like, oh man, if this encoder from SJJX doesn't do this X input, y, uh, D input, I might be asked out and I would have eventually, I would have had to have bought the Intech board. The Intech board, again, granted, it, it does fit cleanly for RK one ups and that's perfectly fine, um, but it does come with buttons and it does come with joysticks 
And from what I've seen as far as the Facebook group, a lot of people do modify the buttons and the joysticks on those because they either feel cheap, they don't click enough and all that. So again, I believe an Intec board at the time of shooting, it's like 120 bucks and that's a lot. I mean, granted, yes, there's a whole deck and buttons and joystick, but especially in the modding community, you know you're gonna change the buttons and the joysticks. Um, again, it would have been my last resort. I would have had to buy an Intec board if this didn't work out. And from what I understand, the Intec board would let you do the X to D input swap. So again, that is one major deal I would say. If you are looking to do a switch cade, you do wanna make sure that you do have the X input to D input swap. As you know, a lot of people do like fighters. There's also the Nickelodeon game that came out and obviously Super Smash Bros. So if you did wanna play that in an arcade setting, you would need that feature. Now the only thing that if you did get the intake board, as you could see with the button layout, you would still have to modify it. From what I've seen, there is no way to modify like controller inputs as far as the actual switch itself. There's no settings that you could go to to, to change button input. So for example, I have my encoder already wired up. There's no way to go into settings and say, hey, you know what? Make this button R1 and make this button L1. And, there's no way to do it. You would have to actually physically move around, you know, prongs and plugs. So there is really no way to modify that. Again, whoever does have an insight, if you want to, you know, comment down below, please do so. Let me know how Street Fighter works. I did post it on Facebook, but nobody really wanted to hop out or they haven't downloaded Ultra Street Fighter 2. Um, so let me know how it goes. If you do have an insight board, let me know how Ultra Street Fighter works or Mortal Kombat and stuff. As you can see, when it came to like Mortal Kombat, you could probably get away with it, but when it came to Street Fighter, I know that is one game, but when it came to Street Fighter, it was just, it was a hard pass. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to do it the intake way. So now if you do go back on the video of me talking about the Konami comment, I did mention something, which now I found it thanks to somebody's comment. Um, I did mention something about when the actual device is off or in sleep mode, there was no way to wake it up unless I actually took the control panel off and then woke up the actual switch. And again, shout out to the person that posted it. I should look up your name, I'm sorry. I'm making this video quick, but he basically made a comment and he said, hey, whatever button you have for the menu, that menu button, if you hold down that menu button for five seconds, it will actually wake up your switch. And I said, oh man, let me go quickly and try it out. So as you can see right now, the switch is in sleep mode. If I hold down the menu button, which again for me is the home button, it woke it up and I basically spin the joystick and I'm good to go. The only big thing I do also notice, and I don't know if you can see it there, but no matter what I did, I swapped the encoders, but as you can see, it, no, it recognizes my player one as player two. So every time I basically set up and I start up my switch, I really quickly just go to the controls and then I change the grip order and I'll spin player one, and I'll spin player two, and I'm good to go. So now this is player one, this is player two. That is the only thing I usually have to do. If I'm playing a regular like one player game, it's not that drastic of a deal, um, but playing some games like Ultra Street Fighter, it would be a little bit of a headache. Player two would be here and player one. But there is no way around it. I even physically swapped the encoder boards I even swapped the USB ports on the back. No matter what, for some reason, it always makes player one, player two. But as you just saw, wake it up, you go to change grip order, and now you're back in action. You have no issues at all to play. So I'm really happy that this encoder board does wake up the Switch. And again, zero delay. This is just a beautiful thing. It's awesome. Now, again, when it came to the Switch, and if you should do this to your Switch, the Switch has a very big library. This is Windjammers 2, a classic Neo Geo game. And honestly, playing it on arcade sticks, it's a pretty fun game. Not to mention on the Switch library, the eShop store, there are so many kind of 8-bit, 16-bit games that these developers are making. And it's, it's pretty cool. It's an awesome feeling. I mean, again, I'm 31 going to be 32 and I just love the whole 16-bit graphics. It's awesome. Playing beat-em-ups, like if you see on my stream, I did a stream of playing um, Mayhem Brawlers. I'll show you some Streets of Rage footage too. 
it's just an awesome feeling. It, it, per, it plays awesome with the arcade sticks. And again, A button layout is great. I haven't played this game in a while, so let's just see. This is Windjammers 2. Boom, there's a goal. Oh, I'm muted. And I lost. <laughs> Oh, again, I haven't played this in a while, but again, this is a classic arcade game, Windjammers 2. And as you can see on the Switch, developers made some beautiful recreations of it. Not to mention, again, I will play some Streets of Rage 4, and that is just a gorgeous looking game. Oh, I should have been able to do that, there you go. Oh, he blocked it. Oh, that was that. But awesome, as you can see, I press the home button. I always like to quit my games. So you close out the game. I'll go into my library and we'll load up some Streets of Rage 4. And again, you could play this with two players. Also with the Switch, if you had, possibly I haven't tried it, but I guess if you take the Joy-Cons off, you could make that player three. Um, you could also add other controllers to it to be four player. Again, I think it's an awesome, awesome, feature I just jumped in with player two so player could player two could play and also so while this is going I'll tell you about the stream idea that I did and we did a couple things I basically called it hit the sticks where basically I play new switch games that come out and we determine if the game number one is playable on arcade sticks and number two if it's enjoyable on arcade sticks so Pretty cool. So far, had a couple of successful streams, found some new games that I never would probably play, uh, and they turned out to be amazing games. Again, a lot of people watching on the stream, so thank you guys for watching the stream. And it's awesome. As you can see, we got Streets of Rage action. Definitely a classic. If you haven't played Streets of Rage for the remake, it is a beautiful remake. And awesome. I mean, again, Streets of Rage, there you go. Again, not all games will play well on arcade sticks. I have yet to try Odyssey. I was playing some Mario Bros. Deluxe. Um, this is actually a, rent, a remake or ported over from the Wii U. And it's pretty cool, it's awesome. Again, if you are looking to convert your arcade cabinet to a Switch Cade, I highly suggest it. Again, big thing is the eShop. I'm gonna go more in depth right now as far as the modded device that I have. Um, again, you could take a look at it. It's called the Ultimate Handheld. Um, basically, with the mod, you do have the entire eShop library at your fingertips. No joke. You have the entire library at your fingertips. I will just quickly show off some Mario. The big thing, like for me, as you can see on my control deck, I obviously don't have the buttons labeled. So kind of just getting acquainted to like where the buttons are, you get a good hang of it. So as you can see, I'm holding this Y and I'm able to run and jump and dash. Awesome. And again, I am running a 1080p monitor, uh, TV on this, I should say. And that is a must because the Switch can output 1080p. No need for 4K because the Switch cannot output 4K. And awesome. I'm going to end it with this. I'm going to show you guys the shop. Basically, there's a very special app that is here. I'm going to blur out the screen to blur out the server. Basically, it is a server-based type of setup. Um, you have to put the server in to get the games. And uh, you literally have the entire eShop library at your fingertips. It's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. Again, I learned so many new games. I've played so many new games. And... It's just great. Again, just to even see if these games do work with the arcade sticks and if they are arcade friendly. It's just, it's a great, great feature. So as you can see, I can go to this category that says new games and I have it arranged by recently released. So whatever was recently released, it will show up on the top of the list. Um, again, you do find some amazing games. You do find random company made games or user created games. But all in all, you do find a lot. You could always, you know, select a game. You could see a little bit of a preview and a reading on it, description on it before you pick it and download it. Um, again, when you 
when I say you have a lot of games, as you could see, there is quite a library when it comes to the Switch. Uh, there you guys have it. That is honestly it. Talked about the encoders, I talked about the button layouts, the comparison on it. And again, I, unfortunately, I cannot link the um, flash thing for the encoders. You just have to ask the company for the executable to update your encoders for the D input to X input. But all in all, again, I had a couple people request more details and how the button layout is on this. And I hope it worked. VVP, Game Case Arcades, Switchcade. Be sure to check out the stream, hit the sticks. Awesome.